Hi, this is Cindy, and I'm going to talk today about how to do a cutout. Um, a cutout in Revit allows you to make a material that is see-through and uh, has some kind of pattern to it. And I have two different examples that you can see on the screen here. I've got these red um, columns in the back just so you can see that these items are, in fact, see-through. Um, and I've just got two extrusions here with um, the uh, cutout material applied. And on both of these, you can see, you know, these are extrusions that have some thickness. Um, the difference between these two, the one on our, my left here uh, with this pattern, this is certainly a pattern that you could do with extrusions and voids. Um, however, if you did, it's going to cause the drawing to be much larger. Um, and so if you do a cutout instead, and this is commonly done with patterns like this or something like chain link fence would be another good example. Uh, it's a lot easier to use this as a material rather than creating uh, cutouts or you know voids and extrusions that are then going to slow down your drawing dramatically. The one on the right here is some flames as you can see there and um, what's nice about these is if you had some like a double-sided fireplace these are nice to use for that. Um, you can place this inside of your fireplace when you render. These black lines, of course, do not render. And you just have the flames there. If you want it to look like it's glowing, you could add a couple of light bulbs as well. Um, so I'm just going to talk about how to create these two different kinds of cutout materials. Now these are both just done with our materials, so I'm going to go to Manage Materials and show you how these two are set up differently. Um, now the first basic one, the one with circles, the color that's applied there is simply the color itself. And I'm just going to change this to a canvas so you can see that in a flat view. Um, so you can see in the preview there, even though it's very minuscule, um, that you can see how that changes. And if I change my color, it's then going to update my preview. Now my uh, material is going to be purple. Um, so the material that I have under cutouts here, under this cutout portion, is I have a image that looks like this. Um, let me just hover here so that'll pop out. I'll just double click on it. Um, and so you can see that here. So everywhere where the white um, is, is going to um, go clear through um, the project and that's going to be solid. So anywhere where there's white is where your solid material is going to be applied. Now I could make the material of this anything I want. Over here on the right, I could make this copper or some kind of glass, or I could make it, you know, I don't have to just make it a solid color. Um, and that material, whatever it is, is only going to be applied to the white areas. The black areas are going to punch through um, and be clear. So um, when I'm looking at my pattern here, you can see that that those white areas uh, on that we're looking at here were the black areas on my image, and those again um, simply punch through the material, uh, making it see through. I've applied the material to this in entire extrusion. Um, if you had something that was more complicated and you applied it to the front and the back, it's going to align those two materials. Um, together and so you're not going to like when you're looking at it from one direction you're not going to see an overlap of the material on the back it's going to automatically just show you what it looks like um, from the, the side that you're looking at it from um, so the flames over here on the right and this is a uh, kind of a mystery to me as far as how sometimes the Revit imaging works with the <laughs> material um, thing but so I have two different images here. I have one, I have the image of the fire itself, um, and it looks like this. It's just an image of flames. This is um, is tiled, but you can you get the idea there that it's just an image of flames. I took that same Im image of flames into Photoshop. I made my flames white, the background black, um, and then so then now my flames, wherever the flames are, are just going to show up and everything else is going to be clear in the background. Now you'll notice that I've got this rotated 180 degrees on the screen it looks sideways but then it comes out um, in my project horizontal even though it looks vertical here. Why that is I can't exactly explain to you. Often you have to play with this rotation here in order to get your material to 
rest in your project correctly. Sometimes even going into that image in Photoshop, you know, as this one is, I rotated it 90 degrees so it was going upright, and for whatever reason that makes it then come into the program correctly, and I just had to play with that. It's not always the same problem, so I can't really explain to you right now um, why that happens. Um, you'll notice that my scale is one foot and three foot because, again, this is a long piece. Um, it's not a square, so you wouldn't want it one over one. You would have a squished flames then. And um, with this same scale, you just would want it to be the same here as you would do on your fire. Now this has lots of different possibilities. Um, if you were doing a retail space, you could place your different retail items on um, an extruded panel like this, like shoes or purses or accessories, things like that, that you perhaps wouldn't want to actually build in Revit. Um, and as you um, are able to place those, no matter what direction you look at the 3D view of your retail space, that product is still going to show up correctly because it'll show from either side. Also nice if you're going to add some kind of um, interesting accessory, you know, like a statue or that sits on a table or something like that to your project, um, doing this cutout is sometimes a lot easier than trying to create a Revit form. Thanks.